Welcome, it's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. I'm Jay Caperin, KXIC morning host, here with Ron Souls, your Petland of Iowa City owner, along with his wife Wendy and their family, and they are there for you. Open at noon today, the show airing on Sundays in this 9 o'clock hour on AM 800 KXIC. Podcast available earlier, though, usually we record it on Thursday or Friday morning, and it's available for you to listen to if you'd like to. And each week we have the breed of the week, the amazing pet story of the week. We have a few topics to talk about, and we talk pets, uh, those that are uh, our furry friends, our scaled friends of the family. And I'm seeing a lot more of those as the weather's starting to turn here, Ron. People are happy to get their dogs out. Are you, are you selling more leashes and, and that type of thing right now? We reviewed the numbers this morning, and the, the answer is totally yes. Yeah. Uh, we were a little surprised at the great numbers. You know, there was a lot of more, a lot more supplies going home this month compared to previous. Oh, actually, compared to previous years. Mm. And so that was, we were like, "Wow, are we doing that?" You know, you, mm. you, from a, a owner's perspective, you got to find out oh, how, how are we doing that right now. And right. so we were trying to discover how are we uh, doing that as a store and i think a lot of it is just you know hey the weather's turning and everybody's coming in and saying hey i need a new one of these a new one of those and so we definitely appreciate Good that deal well you're going to see more and more of that as the weather does turn more of uh, the pet owners out there walking their dogs and just remember if you need anything for your pets just remember petland of iowa city uh before we get into the show we're going to have uh, i mentioned the amazing pet story is going to take us to china the breed of the week is the go is the uh, Labrador Retriever, and uh, what, we're going to talk about chewing, we'll and talk- then a also a uh, talk about Natural Balance's new dog food called uh, Wild Pursuit, and we'll just you know briefly okay. review that food. So before we do any of that, just tell us a little bit about your store, Ron. We're Petland of Iowa City. We are located across from the Sycamore Mall. And we're all about education and playtime, I guess is the best way to do it. When you come in, uh, what Wendy and I work with our counselors on is education of, you know, not only dogs, but of rabbits. And we've got maybe even a <laughs> rabbit story today to talk about. There was a new member of the family into the Capron oh, family. Oh, yeah. um, but we do all this education so that you understand what you're getting into and that you're prepared for it. And so we talk a lot about that. Like flea and tick season is right now. You want to uh, uh, start treating your dog right now. But there is a lot of different ways to treat your dog or cat. And so we'll go through all the different options that you have so that you protect your dog the way you want to, but do it effectively. So, you know, take that to dog food, leash and collar, bowls, uh, beds, all sorts of different supplies. We'll talk with you about the best practices of all those. And you'd be surprised on we get you know, droned down to the simplest versions of things. And when you find out the benefits, you're like, wait, I want to get this one, not that one. So we do a lot of education, not only on the pet, but on the supplies as well. Right. And, you know, people who are owning, who own pets come up with all types of things that they have a reason to go to the pet store for. Maybe there's something your dog's doing that you can't stand, or maybe you just need a supply and you're not sure what, what you need. And so just talk to those counselors. They'll be sure to take care of you. And yeah, we can squeeze that in real quick before we get to anything else is that, yeah, new member of the family, a little black yeah. and white dwarf, uh, Rabbit, a Dutch rabbit, I understand, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and it's a tiny black and white rabbit, Cute. which we don't have a name yet. Uh, and one thing I can tell you, and, and I think it's why we decided to make the decision, is we talked, you know, we talked about it. We we're not ready for a puppy yet. Uh, Jack really wanted one, and we thought, you know, it's good to teach him some responsibility. He's six years old. He's got to teach, you know. So this is going to be good to kind of teach him that. But uh, we want, I wanted to make sure that if we have one of these, it's not going to be a rabbit that. You, you try and touch it and it just runs away. It's scared. You know, I've, I've been around rabbits uh, before in the past. And, uh, you know, to me, it sometimes doesn't feel like the rabbit's having any fun. The person's not having fun. So I, I was hoping that we could get a, a rabbit that feels like it's a type of animal that likes to be held. It likes to be, um, you know, it, it seems like to enjoy the relationship and not just be scared of you. And so right. that was one of the things I was concerned about. And I have to say, these the, the every one of the rabbits we were, we were um, holding and playing with were, very uh, calm, and we had learned from one of your uh, counselors that they were 
come from a someone who shows bunnies, you know, and maybe it's part of being used to being held or whatever it is. But that's what's great is our little guy can hold hold her and you know care for her, and it's not like it's trying to take off to the corner every time every at every second. It's the type of animal that uh, in, seems to enjoy being held and pet and uh, cared for. So that was one of the concerns I had about a rabbit in particular because I've been around some skittish ones right. in the past. So I don't know if it's the, the, from the because it's from that person who shows bunnies or, yeah. or why yeah. that well is. that's part of it that's the first step the second step is when you take them home a lot of good handling mm -hmm. um continue you know through every day mm -hmm. uh, i know with our guinea pig we had a very tamed guinea pig um, and we held the guinea pig every time we were watching tv so every time jack is watching tv get the rabbit out get it in his lap and get him used to hey this is how we make a bunny uh be part of the family and yeah. and uh and also, though, know that every pet has their own personalities, so sure. you'll see those come out. And sometimes, just like cats, you know, sometimes they're a little skittish. Yeah. Even dogs, you know, they, they always hear, you know, my dog is afraid of men with hats on. Well, yeah. that's because um, there there was an experience or something in the past. I don't understand the hat thing, though. I always yeah, was weird. questioned. Yeah, yeah. or masks. I think it's more yeah, non recognizable, you know, kind of thing when they put hats that on, and that's yeah. probably what it is. But uh, handling them is a, is a big thing. Then it's making it so that it's part of your house. So what, you know, like we were saying earlier, there are litters and, and bedding, and then there are better bedding and mm -hmm. litters so that you don't have as much stink in the house. And, and wait, when am I supposed to change it and getting into that shedding is going to be an issue that you're going to find out. Really? With the bunny? I not, what am I going to tell you? Which the Furminator? The Furminator. Really? Yeah. All is right. There's actually, uh, uh, we sell a lot of Furminators to bunny owners. Interesting. And so you, you're gonna I had no buy, idea. I didn't think of that on the front end, but yeah, yeah you're going to be a Furminator. It's gonna, so tiny now, I can't picture that, but it is going to get a little bigger. Yeah, and it's going to take a couple months before it really starts shedding. Yeah. Uh, right now, you got all new fur coming yeah. in and all that kind of Super stuff. Super cute little bunny. So too. Food, nutrition issues, yeah. water issues, hey, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's so we'll, all set up in its little home, and uh, the, I have all the supplies you need and everything there at Petland of Obviously. So I just want to mention that we'll. I'll let you know. I'll unveil the name once we decide on what, what we want to name it. But that's been kind of fun. Unveil and it, it's a good example of, of you know, some families in different situations where they're not ready for necessarily a puppy at this point. I think but that's you do a have, great yeah, choice that you made. Yeah. And, and I think it's going to work out well. It's, and you know what? Well, another thing we always laugh and joke about is the interactions between pets and we have our, our kitties, you know, and so Ooh, that's yes. been fun. Uh, you will socialize been, both those together. You, know, you would think the yeah. cat's going to say, uh, meow. Well, uh, what well, we, yeah, good. and what we laughed about is that the one kitty, uh, uh, Zoe, is the more a curious cat and she's not very, very afraid of anything. So she came right up to it, sniffing at it. What does this say? But this, our other cat, Lucy, is just like terrified. And so Devin mm. just thinks it's hilarious. She's like, she thinks it's like a killer bunny with sharp fangs because it won't get what it it's like pe our cats peeking around the corner won't even go in the same room yeah. because it's so terrified of this little so, tiny tiny bunny it usually takes about two weeks for those that are a little skittish yeah. about two weeks and then all of a sudden they're playing and having fun we'll and, figure it all yeah. out so anyway that was uh that's the latest here from the, the capron compound but uh, it's time to move on to the amazing pet story of the week so let's do that as we uh bring in big voice guy big voice guy what's he wearing today Take a quick time out because I can't think of anything. We go to China, so is there? Oh, it'd be funny if I hit a gong. Mm -hmm. Right? Can you do that? Yeah, yeah. I'll put a sound effect in afterwards, just because I'm dubbing this anyway. So we can. Whoa! What was that? A gong? Holy cow! Holy cow! <laughs> Big voice guy. I did not expect that. Oh, it's because we're going to China. That's why he's doing that. We're going to China for our amazing pet story of the week. All right, introduce a big voice guy. Put the gong away. Come on. It's time for the amazing pet story of the week. And we'll give credit to BBC News for today's amazing pet story of the week. And thank you, big voice guys. We do go to China today, and we'll hear about the loyalty of a dog that stayed at his owner's uh, gravesite for uh, a week without any food and refused to leave. Details right now from BBC News. That's pretty amazing, Ron. That's uh, another great story of loyalty, right? Loyalty, yeah. And you, I, I've heard that type of story multiple times, and so it's not unusual. The food, that's the part I think that amazes me the most, is you think, you know, as loyal as a dog or anyone can be, it's you know, okay, so they don't want to leave the site, but you think at some point they'd say, "All right, I'm kind of hungry," you know. And I, I think I, I, I know I love this person, I miss them, but I, 
I, I can wander away for a little bit and go find some food, but a week without eating, I mean, it's, it's I, amazing. Yeah, it had have been close to starvation. I, I would imagine it did get. They something said some of the people were feeding yeah. feeding them because they were worried about it. But, yeah, you know, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's nice how they're they're adapting the the whole the village is adapting to and, it. Yeah, they yeah. and they built they yeah they said there were, there were plans to build a little area there for the dog because the dog obviously doesn't want to leave. But the the love there of a dog uh, and its owner. We'll be back with more after this. That was the amazing pet story week. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Labrador, one of my favorite breeds. It was a great family dog growing up. We had two labs, a black lab mix and a yellow lab. And uh, I know a lot of you out there probably are lab owners or you know of lab owners. We're going to talk about that great breed coming up here. And Ron's going to tell us a bit about a new brand of food. And chewing, chewing, which is also a problem tying into the lab, as I'm thinking of the one in particular mm -hmm. that loved to chew. Uh, my dad's briefcase uh, was one of the casualties. I remember growing up as a child, the leather briefcase took it, uh, turned into a chew toy, and uh, my dad wasn't too happy about that. It's the uh, pet story, amazing pet. That was the amazing pet story of the week. This is the Positive Petland Show on AM 800 KXIC, and we will be right back with more after this. Thanks for tuning in. Check out the podcast. That's KXIC.com. <laughs> All right, ready to go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show. AM 800, KXIC. I'm Jay Caperin, and... We're rolling along here. Petland opens at noon today. If you need any pet supplies, I don't know if there's any more of those uh, little Dutch bunnies there, but maybe you want to add a little bunny to your family. And, uh, of course, all those puppies that uh, maybe maybe it's time for you to add a new puppy and uh, a new member of the family. But, of course, you know, Petland will make sure that you uh, know what you're getting yourself into and help guide you in the right direction. And Ron Salzer is the owner of Petland. He's here today. And, we talked in the first segment a uh, little bit about the amazing pets of the week, the story of loyalty there. And we talked about the new bunny in the family. And now I will move along and talk about the breed of the week, which is the Labrador, the Labrador Retriever, right? Yep, we're hitting the Labrador Retriever, one of the America's most favorite dogs for many, many, many years. And it's because of that family-friendly aspect of the Labrador Retriever. Where do you think the Labrador Retriever originates from? I think it looked a little different back then, though. Da -da. Labrador Retriever. Yeah. I'll say Europe. Is uh, Newfoundland? Yeah. Is that part of? Sure. <laughs> We'll, we'll look it up. After I won't claim it. <laughs> yeah, that's a Google for. Um, it was from Newfoundland, Newfoundland, and back then the fishermen used the Labrador Retriever to catch the fish that were getting away from the nets and everything. <laughs> so that was the original. So it was a retriever even back then, but in a little different way than what we think of today. That's interesting. Um, then over the years, it was crossed with setter spaniels and some other retrievers, and that's what got us to what we see today. I have noticed there is the American Labrador Retriever, uh, which is a little skinnier variety. And then uh, when you go to see them on, sh on the AKC shows and stuff, I just always notice they're really they're thicker in the shoulder area and hindquarters. Uh, it's, a, it's a beefier dog, and so that's more of the show type dog. Hmm. Uh, what we typically think of a Labrador Retriever is the American Lamb, and uh, just a very friendly uh, dog, family friendly. Um, and as they uh, honed them through the years, uh, you know, uh, retrieving game and stuff like that. And so the hunters really like the versatility of the Labrador Retriever. Um, the as far as you know, the upkeep of a Labrador. So it is a large breed. Um, they do. I'm seeing reports that they'll you know, if you have an apartment, a Labrador Retriever is still okay. What they're saying is, is over time, it is going to be okay in, in the apartment because it does tend to be a lazier dog down the road. But just know its first couple of years of life, there is a lot of energy in that lab. Oh, yeah. And how you will have to make it a point of going uh, outside, getting them that run time. Uh, and especially as a young puppy uh, into those first couple of years, it's got to be a lot of exercise, throwing the ball, getting that guy running uh, and getting that out. So that when you bring them back into, let's say you do have an apartment, uh, then it's a much mellower, calmer dog, uh, even as a puppy, because all the energies went out. So just know that you're getting into that. Um, I, I think 
um, having the yard, fenced in yard, uh, uh, and having a family that will take this dog out multiple times a day, um, I think you're in the right direction. The coat is a double coat. It actually has some uh, water resistant capabilities. And by maintaining that coat uh, with the Furminator and other things, you you actually have a fairly waterproof dog. Um, and and uh, uh, know, though, that there is some shedding aspects to it and that a Furminator or some uh, deferring type brushing is going to meet, be needed if you don't want your house having that fur, you know, all, all around and all that. Um, the colors that, it come in to, uh, that come into the lab are uh, predominantly predominantly what black uh, gold and chocolate and right now we have a yellow and we have two chocolate labs and again we're recording on thursday so i can't guarantee what's going to be on on yeah. sunday but i'll get labrador retrievers on a fa uh, fairly regular basis um, because of the popularity of them yeah that was my next question anyway was uh, if you have any but you generally do have um those labs yeah pretty, pretty common yeah and uh and also know that they're a uh, fairly easy dog to train and so it's another reason why america has just loved this dog over the years good because, family dog yeah. for sure yeah absolutely it's and a that's the labrador retriever that's right the labrador retriever is the breed of the week and so as we roll along that's ron Solzer with petland of iowa city the owner of petland and i'm jay capron and uh we move along now talk about chewing and that does tie into the lab and i told you uh, a little bit last segment about, uh, yeah, I, I still remember my dad's briefcase. Uh, shortly after we were, we got the puppy, he found the briefcase, and it was a nice leather briefcase. Uh, and, of course, uh, just chew marks all over that thing. And then we realized right away, we got to do something about this. This dog loved to chew, loved to get those jaws going, get them nice and strong. And yeah. so we realized pretty quickly we got to get some things for him. And you brought a whole a whole uh, For, basket of stuff a here. variety and that's what i wanted to talk about today is is how do i handle i got a dog that chews at home realize that when they're puppies that is teething that they're going through but that's the best time to show them what are toys that are appropriate to chew and what is not appropriate to chew in our house like you don't want them chewing your furniture the rug the corners of uh, the walls uh, the trimming uh, you know all that kind of stuff i've heard about walls being chewed as oh like, yeah oh, man and it's just their tendency to want to chew. And I equate it to you if when you were a child, and most people can remember this, when you were losing your teeth, don't you remember when you would clamp down on things, especially with your uh, teeth uh, further back in your mouth? It felt good to just chew on something. And that was your tooth coming out. Well, puppies are feeling that same thing. And they're like, I want to chew on something because it feels good when I chew on it. And that helps uh, them then lose the tooth down the road. But dogs have a stronger tendency to chew even in later years. So if we establish good behaviors as a puppy, we'll get that benefit down the road. Uh, the key to uh, getting your dog to stop chewing everything in the house is giving them things that they would rather chew than the trim, the legs, the carpeting, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a variety of things for them to go after uh, in your house. So everything from soft and you know fluffy to uh, hard and uh, and chewy kind of a thing. So that's what we're going to talk about is what are examples of the chews all the way through that. Uh, and here we also know when we get into the soft ones, we know that there's uh, one one part of it that we have to have for the dog and that's that that squeaky <laughs> part. Um, and we're going to talk about, hey, if I don't like that squeak, what do I do? So there are products out there. I'm looking at one right now. It's a, it's soft. It's furry, all that kind of thing. So it probably resembles them catching, you know, the rabbit or, so, oh, don't mean to fed you, Jay. <laughs> Close your ears. <laughs> um, but it, it's the, or the waterfowl and all that kind of a thing. Uh, the squeak, I don't know, you know, I, I don't think they really crave the screaming of a, a little petter or whatever, but uh, for some reason, they love that squeak. Mm -hmm. And so we found that over the years, and a lot of these plush toys have the squeak. Well, there's actually toys now where you can have a little Velcro on the back of it, and when they uh, get the squeaking going and all of a sudden the squeaker stops and they don't like the toy anymore this one has a little velcro opening you take the old one out and put the new one in <laughs> and you can even replace it there's comes with extra squeakers yeah and you can buy more extra speak squeakers as they go through them yeah uh, they come in different sizes and different uh themes and all that kind of stuff so whatever however big your dog is or small your dog is you can get into the side 
um, we've talked about this uh, almost probably a couple months ago. If you're that person that says enough with the squeaker, or maybe your dog is just so excessive with squeaking that thing, there are ultrasonic squeakers out there now. And they even have strong ones. So if your dog is that one that can uh, ruin the squeaker within minutes, there's now uh, ultrasonic ones where, here, this is what they sound like. And I, I don't even know if you can hear that, but all I yeah, hear it's is going through air. the microphone. It's just air. But and, and I've seen that used in the store before. And the dog, there was a dog in the store at the time that was looking around. Yeah, I thought it was kind of neat because you just hear that and you're thinking, well, there's nothing to it. But yeah, the all dog hears is, uh-huh. yeah. And so it's at a very high pitch above our audibility of a human, but it's still within theirs. And so they hear it and they still attack this thing just like a squeaker toy. And you're not now getting irritated and i do like here jay I, I squeak that one you notice how strong it is it's, oh yeah you got to push pretty good right that's yeah, for yeah. those stronger chewers yeah, 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 and yeah. so that's going to last longer as it's a like result. a hard if you could picture like a hard frisbee disc that's yeah what that felt like is that if you're, it's that consistency they, they have to really bite on that yeah. but that's good because that first one you showed i think uh, a lab in particular or some of the stronger jawed dogs i think they could rip those apart pretty mm -hmm. easily so. so we now have we brought this in we actually brought this in about seven years ago and it just it didn't take off people didn't get it um, we reintroduced it into the store a few months ago, and it's now it's a staple in the store. So huh. we'll be maintaining these. Um, people are getting it and saying, oh, wow, that thing really works. Um, some other plush toys that have uh, things in them that the dogs love. This is a, you know that sound, right? This is a big yellow uh, dog, dog with his tongue thing. stuck out. It looks, <laughs> it looks pretty silly there. And, it, and he is, uh, there's a bottle inside it, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a the bottle. water bottle. Yeah, and yeah. again, this one has that Velcro uh, bottom to it. Just open that up, slide a bottle in, yep. close it. Yep. If, then, when this one eventually cracks, cracks and is not making all the noise, you can just slide another one in there. And so huh. it's a nice uh, toy to have where you can keep on putting in what they really love about the toy. Interesting. I never saw one of those before. Uh, then we have, you know, just the simple, if your dog is, you know, people will come in and go, that toy didn't last, you know, kind of a thing. My thing is, is your dog really loved it. And I know you are know, like, oh, shoot, you know, I, I spent a lot of money on that. Um, but would you rather have your dog chewing on the carpeting, you know, kind of a thing. And so you got to way of cons and uh, we're always trying to find that thing that's a little tougher um, but one of another staple uh, that's in our store are the fleece toys which are a little stronger um, plush still but the it's economy size you know that's what you're going after they're cheaper you give it to them it lasts for about a week or two and then you're done or and for you strong chores a day mm -hmm. um, but you know they'll come with squeakers and stuff like that and, oh there it is so there are more economical plush toys, you know, if your dog d really rips it apart. It's always good to get those from time to time so that they get that tendency out and they know, uh, do it to the toy, not to my carpeting. And then if your dog is tenacious on the on the softer plushy things, get the ropes. The ropes are the most economical plush toy. There are ropes that are stronger than others. Um, so you will find that, you know, one brand will work better than another. And it's all on how tight the wound uh, the winding is of the rope that was one of my favorite things to do with the dog is the, the rope. you're gonna say one of your favorite things to do is chew on the no, rope. not chewing the rope but uh playing tug of tug of war with yeah. the dog because and i was always amazed how strong the dogs can be when they get they get a hold of that and pull back and use those neck muscles and oh, yeah. their whole body and their pulling trying to pull yeah, yeah, fun yeah. and we have ropes everything from small to those little yorkies out there I've got ropes that are an inch to two inches thick. Wow. I've got ropes that are tied up in knots that go uh, about a foot in diameter <laughs> or more. Wow. I mean, they're just amazing. <laughs> uh, and when we bring them in, they get sold out quick. So the, it's a it's the staple again in our store. And we're still trying to figure out how many to bring in because when we do, they go out very quickly. Mm. Uh, then moving on to stuff that is a little harder in nature the classic tennis ball you gotta have the tennis ball yeah and kong has a really nice uh, economical we have some petland branded tennis balls that are safe for the dog um they usually have some kind of a squeak in them and so that's an added bonus go get uh, yeah. i just saw mark walk by he could have go get it mark. go get it come on why is mark running <laughs> he's fast <laughs> um 
then getting into uh, the rubber type toys, Kong is a real popular one. That's the brand. Uh, yeah, Kong. Kong, yeah. Kong has uh, different. No, that Kong has different. Uh, oh, what do you call it? Durabilities. And the colors mean something. And the colors too. are telling you how strong they are. So the uh, baby blues uh, and the swirls and the swirl reds are all in a softer toy. So those are good for both the puppy and that older senior dog that's losing teeth and, mm. and all that, but still has that tendency to want to chew. They're softer, so they'll get a little bit of feel out of them. The red one is that standard right in the middle for most dogs. Um, and then black is the extreme. So if you have your dog that, uh, gosh, he tears up these Kongs, make sure you get the black one. Um, but this is a good time to bring out make sure you get the right size of whatever you're doing whether it's plush or uh, soft or hard um, if it's small for the dog the dog's going to be able to rip it apart easier because it'll get it back into that back section of the jaw mm -hmm. where they're the strongest and they'll chew it up so you can get the strongest toy but if you got it too small it's going to figure out how to rip that thing apart yeah. so size does matter for dog toys and so you want to make sure you get if if the one that you got was ripped up and it was supposed to be durable, go back and get the next size bigger or too bigger, depending on your dog. If you do go too big, it doesn't fit in their mouth, so you can't go that way either. Yeah. But getting the appropriate size usually solves most dogs' problem where they'll chew it up too quickly. I think the texture is important, too, with the, the dog. If you have a, a sm smaller dog that doesn't have as strong of a bite, you probably don't want to get them the black one because they won't like the feel. Right. It'll People be, have gone to the black yeah, one. and It'll be like dog. a piece of plastic, and they're right. just, I don't want to chew that. they they got to have that feel that they can actually bite into it a little mm -hmm. bit, right? That's why you're going to find uh, Kong stuff, which is like a cheese whizzy type texture but it tastes good and so you'll uh, you can apply that to all your toys and find that they'll be more apt to chew it they have something it... you could put on there that oh I, yeah I yeah know. it goes right in the in i knew the i know people put stuff in there i didn't realize that kong made a like oh a yeah paste or something. they call it stuff okay and you just uh you put it up inside in of it and mm -hmm. then they then they bite at it till they can get something and if, out of there. And if you yeah. want it to go longer you spray it up into the kong and then you put it in the freezer Oh, and so now so it solidifies hard, yeah. it, and now it's going to take longer for the dog to get that out. Is there so different flavors? Of different stuff, flavors, imagine, all so, sorts of yeah. stuff. Uh, so, so we talked a lot of good things. You brought out the word texture. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know, notice how we went from soft to now we're into the rubbery side of things. Mm -hmm. um, that is an important thing to have a lot of different textures for your dogs. Uh, and we also talked about size matters. And then there's toys where you can. Like we said with the Kong, you can put things in them and it's a challenge for the dog to get them out. And that's fun for the dog. Do you have that one thing that you that was made by the NASA guy? Yeah, the the Wigsy. Yeah, I didn't bring any no. today, but no. the that's Wigsy kind of a fun is fun. Yeah, it's a new it's one of those. Uh, uh, it's made by a NASA employee, uh, ex NASA employee. When they went through their layoffs, he was one of them that got laid off. Uh, he knew a lot about materials and learned about manufacturing and so he has we have a product in our store called the wigsy uh, and it is such a cool toy because he guarantees them so you can bring them back if they chew them up uh, then uh, he's made it so you can stuff things in them and so you can put treats in them to attract your dog to it it's made of a material that he is aware of through nasa that is really durable um, we get we do get uh, a few back a year, but not many at all. Uh, and so it is a very durable toy, very colorful, even smells like vanilla. And then what I really like about it is it's designed by an American. It's made on the East Coast with uh, materials from America. Mm -hmm. So this thing is all American. And I like the fact that NASA was part, you yeah, know, kind it's of cool. And in, the, indirectly in, part and, of and it. the idea to the actual toy itself is it's a puzzle, right? For the dog. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I know a little bit about manufacturing and it, it's a complicated little toy to make as well. So it's, they, you put a treat in it and yeah, then they have to do it just it, the right way to get the treat out. Right. right. And, and they, it's not just falling out. They have to actually work it out mm -hmm. because there's a little cavernous thing built into the middle of it. And then it has to go through a tinier hole to get it out. So they have to work and crunch and all that kind of stuff to get it out. I like it. That's fun. 
So there's a lot of variety, and then uh, and then we haven't even got to the good old American bone, uh, right? Right. You've Before we get there, and... I'm going to go to the hardest of toys. Nyla bone has really dominated the market, and we do have oh, I think two alternatives in in our store to Nyla bone, but the similar concept. Um, it's a very hard chew that the dogs can, if they get flakes of it off, it'll pass right through them. It's inert. It doesn't affect the dog at all. It's safe for them to pass it through. But this is for if you did, you know, hey, I, I want something that won't stain my carpeting and all that. Mm. Uh, the Nyla Bone is a great one. And uh, they have a couple of different varieties for the stronger chewers. They have the, the normal chew. Uh, for the dogs out there that we talked about texture mm. they have also this one has all these knobbies sticking out of it mm. um, that's good uh, for the dog uh, you'll notice that most nylon bone products have uh, uh, wider en uh, ends on both sides so that the dog just tends to like that bigger end it resembles a bone I'm not sure if that's why they like it or not as, and as soon as they chew off the end that is bigger they tend to not like it anymore and they mm. leave it go. So there is something about it that they like when it's a bigger thing on the end. Might be just how it fits into their jaw and it stays in there, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah, and that one's called a dental chew. So it's got yeah. the, the knobbies to help clean the teeth. And all chews are great for dental care. Uh, it does two things. One is, is it's making sure that their teeth are all uh, maintain in a strong fashion where the the bone and the gums really tighten up around it. And then uh, it also works at scraping off some of that plaque uh, before it really builds up. And so chews are great for that because they should uh, uh, brush you know their teeth just like we do to have the best teeth going forward. This is some natural ways for you to help your dog uh, uh uh, brush their teeth through chews. Hard kibble is your number one way to do that. So uh, nylon bone starts off with that normal chew. Uh, strong chewers uh, will find that this goes away fairly quickly. So then we recommend them to jump up to the Dura chews and they have different sizes. And I brought in a really massive one in here for big dogs yeah. like Labrador retrievers. We talked There's about There's a lab it. on the front. <laughs> And so it's a massive bone, and so it'll take a while for them to get through it. Uh, so Durachu is the is the level of nylon bone that you want to get for those. And then what is incredible is the Galileo, um, Galileo. for for nylon bone. And wow. I would wonder, I should ask them why did they call it the Galileo? That maybe there's a story in there. <laughs> but this thing is the strongest thing I've ever found for dogs. Um, the strong chewers, I've, uh, will, this will last about six months. Um, that's, that's the extremely strong chewers, the really strong chewers. This will last for years. And so it's a really durable, uh, uh, product for your dog. Again, get the one appropriate for the size of your dog. We have multiple sizes, um, for those big dogs and for those medium dogs that really can chew huh. things apart. This thing isn't going to go anywhere Galileo. fast, and they Cur love it. Curiosity question. Uh, Nate, you rattle off a few of the strongest, extra strong chewing breeds out there that you've uh, come across. When someone says, I've got a, th this dog bites through everything, what, what are some of those dogs? Well, definitely, it, it, it is different for every dog, but the trend does go, the bigger the dog, the strong, usually the stronger the chewer. But there are big dogs out there that are not strong chewers. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they just don't have the desire in them. So it's usually the bigger the dog, the, the stronger the chewer. And that's okay. when you're going to get into things. That's why I keep on all, also emphasizing, get the right size for your dog. Because people get those small toys for the bigger dogs. Um, and they go and, right through them. Yeah. yeah. Or if you have a small dog that's chewing right through those small ones, just get the one size bigger and see if that solves your problem right okay. there. So the Galileo is the, is right, the, the ultimate. Big breeds out there. And we've got different sizes. Um, I brought one last hard toy, and this is kind of in the It's like meeting. a baby toy. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a key, a, a ring of keys. <laughs> and we look at it and go, oh, the dogs must love keys. Well, what they like about it is it moves. Uh, it has different textures and and a different ways to chew on it. And we just have found that this key, this ring of keys, it's all that nyla bony uh, consistency. It's also different colors, which doesn't make too much difference to the dog. But um, but we find that the dogs love them, so we sell a lot of the nyla bone keys <laughs> to everything from puppies on all all the way up. And I brought an adult toy here, so it's really big. Um, so that is all the chews of different varieties and uh, i'm going to change the chew into now natural chews um, so we know about the rawhide 
uh, a lot of, you know, hey, dogs, don't all dogs eat rawhide? Well, all, you know, dog, rawhides are good chews for adult dogs if your dog is capable of understanding the rawhide. So I put a lot of precaution in that. They are not good chews for puppies. Puppies think that their throats are a mile wide and then anything is going to go down there. Rawhide comes off in chunks and will literally uh, uh, suffocate your dog. So they can choke on, they can choke on it. Uh, Callie, at two years of age, a dachshund, uh, our dachshund, we brought a rawhide home just to see what would happen. And lo and behold, started gagging. Wendy, who is, she's not the one to go in and get things when things are going awry, but she had to stick her hands down that throat to get the rawhide back out because Callie couldn't breathe anymore. Oh, so boy. those you want to be very cautious with the rawhide. Great chews for adult dogs. Supervise it for a while for you know, you know, days and weeks to see that the dog understands that not everything fits down their throat. Um, you might have, and there are a lot of dogs that just rawhides are not appropriate for them. They just don't get it. So that's the precaution. Again, great chew, but you got to put a lot of precaution. And the other thing not so good about rawhides is there's zero nutritional value in them. And so uh, don't think that you're, you know, giving your dog calories or anything like that, where you can give some of these other chews that we'll talk about, and they'll have good calories in them for the dog that, you know, that they need them. Uh, also at Petland, uh, our, uh, we have chews that are American made and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for that one specifically, um, we have those available. Um, we ha I think all of the China ones are, you know, there's, I don't think you can even find those that much anymore, but you will find other countries uh, for the more economical chews out there. This one's from Argentina. And so there are some places where there were, uh, what, America is still importing them, um, but they're safe and, you know, regulated and all that kind of a thing. Um, so now getting into the different natural chews. So what we basically have, beef, chicken, lamb, and buffalo, and there's some other ones out there. Um, uh, know that for the strong chewer, you have to avoid the poultry, you have to avoid ham bones, uh, but you can, you're, you're safe with beef and with buffalo. Okay. Uh, so have that precaution. So if you have that strong chewer, just remember beef and buffalo and you're, you're good to go there. For the rest of them, uh, they're not strong enough to splinter the bone and that's the precaution that you got to take. Um, so uh, it, know that there's a lot of different uh, availability out there and the, the, it goes from bones to joints to cleaned bones. So if you're concerned about your carpeting type thing, there's uh, cleaned bones so that you're not going to have that. Um, I'm holding a lamb bone right now and I'm, I think there's a meal on this bone right yeah. now. You're, it's going to really go after it as a result because there's so much good uh, meat on it still. Then you go into the Bully Sticks this is a really popular brand for us. And it is a tendon, a meaty tendon that has been cooked de and dehydrated. Um, and then they'll flex them into different shapes and sizes. Right now I've got the Bully Ring. And what's good about the Bully Ring is, is it's one, it's a very hard chew. A strong chewer will probably get through this in a day. Uh, most other dogs, my dog, this thing will last for weeks. Um, because it, I don't have, I don't have strong chewers and so they, uh, chew, 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 but it doesn't do much. Um, uh, it's in a ring because there's no place for it to really start the end and then work through it really quickly. So this one, they kind of chew around for a long time. Uh, and that's why they made it into a ring. They also have it in a straight stick. And I would and, go through that a little quicker. A little probably, quicker yeah, usually so. on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's great because it's it's meaty, it's tendon, it's all natural. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually okay for a puppy because it only comes off in small chunks. They make the thinner ones um, and they curl them up. Is and that bacon? It, <laughs> that looks like probably. bacon a little bit at the top. Yeah, they typically don't have smells. There are, so, oh, this one is saying odor-free, so they've done some work on the odor part. Um, some of these, yeah, when you get them, you might not like the, the uh, smell. Don't rule out all of them because they do, like the one that I have in my hands now is, is they work with it to get the odor out of it. Um, but this one's called a flossy and they've turned it into a curly cue. Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's fun for the dog to just chew through. It's a little thinner for the puppy um, and they love it. 
uh, it definitely, if you're looking to occupy your dog, these things are incredible for that, uh, uh, for your dog. Uh, then moving into antlers, which is kind of hilarious. Um, all of the antlers and horns in our store are naturally fallen. It's actually an interesting story of how they collect these. It's all naturally fallen uh, antlers. If you are that hunter out in the field and you come across antlers on a regular basis that have fallen uh, you know, in the woods and stuff, I'm encouraging you to pick those things up because there's money in this. Uh, and then contact one of these, uh, the uh, companies that they clean it up, they sand it, they cut it into lengths, they sand off the sides and all this kind of a thing. And they make it into a dog tree. And it's a really good long-term, even for stronger chewers, uh, a great uh, tool, uh, chew for your dog. So I have low chewers in my house. I took an antler home three or four years ago. I have, it looks almost identical, but the dogs still go after it. Um, if your dog at first doesn't go after the antler, get one that is split in half. They'll cut it in half because what they like is that marrow in the middle of it. Mm. And so that's a one way to get them attracted to the antler. Um, and that's why you also find them cut in half. So we talked about deer antlers. There's mm -hmm. elk antlers. Now you're going to find that the elk antlers That's are small. Yes. Yeah, this is for a smaller dog. Mm -hmm. They have different sizes for the different size dogs that you have. This one's cut in half. And the reason why it's cut in half is because the dog will go after it more intensively and get through it. And is that a hoof? This looks, yeah, you know what? It's kind of cut like a hoof. This is a water buffalo. Uh, we talked about these oh, a few yeah. weeks back. We are going through these incredibly fast. People love those. People huh? are loving this. They're a little less expensive than the antlers are. And they're a little softer, not much, but a little softer That's as well. I feel that. It's interesting. Uh, again, naturally fallen uh, as far as hmm. you know, where are they getting these water buffalo horns for. Uh, cut into sections that are appropriate for the size of your dog. We have very, very big horns all the way down to um, halved horns and, and all that. So for the smaller ones, uh, we when, when we placed our last order, the, uh, ma the manufacturer said, you know, you keep on up in your order. And we said, yeah, we need to double it again. And, and he actually questioned it and we kind of laughed at it. He goes, I don't know if you want to get that many. And we're like going, well, don't you want to sell these? Yeah, you know? are you a per, uh, manufacturer? Um, what's funny is they came in a week ago. We're already halfway through them. So the, it is a really popular product for our customers and they're really loving them. So come in and try those. We put them right in the aisle way. So where most people, if you brought your dog into our store for the, the $5 nail trim, uh, we put them in t intentionally in the aisle way so that when your dog goes by them, nine out of ten times the dog like stops in its tracks and says <laughs> what is that i want to get one of those so that, that probably is the marketing aspect of it sure um and then one of the final chews that i have is our they go by a lot of different names i've known them over the years by chirpy chews but what it is is himalayan cheese hardened cheese i've never seen this you've talked about chirpy it a million chews. times They're yeah. the chirpy chew so that's what it looks like huh? yeah this one's a really big one. Uh, it's yak so what cheese. It's yak, hardened yak cheese. And I got to feel that one. few too. ingredients past that. The funny thing is pure lime juice is also in oh, it. Nice. I don't know why they do that. It's probably something that makes it harder or something okay. like that. Yeah. But it's a very oh, it hard, is hard It's product. harder than I thought. Yeah. It comes off in crunchy you mm -hmm. know, bits type thing for that strong chewer. The strong chewer will get through this, even though it is really, really, really hard. The strong chewer, it'll take... Um, less than a day to get through, but know that that is a really nutritious treat. Um, when you when your strong chewer gets it down to that little bit that you're afraid of it swallowing, put it into the microwave and you will puff it, it just mm. like popcorn. Pop, you know, uh, puffs up. This will puff up. It won't be as dramatic as popcorn. And you then now let it cool back down and now give it to them. It's now a lot easier to chew, but it's just a fun way. You can actually pop, buy them puffed up now as well. The chirpy chew. The chirpy chews. Cool. And so that is Yak a really good. cheese. That's yeah. a unique one. Um, For the not as stronger chewers, it'll last a lot longer. My dogs licked it to death. Mm -hmm. And so just licked it. Uh, for three days straight and like so this is one of those funny uh, treats that 
holy cow, it's like ice cream or something. Every time they got up, you know, we'd go through the eat and kibble, go outside, and then they would search out the chirpy chew and, and uh, lick that thing to death. And so it was a really good, if you're looking for something to occupy your dog for a little while, this is the chirpy chew or the yak hardened cheese that we have in the store is a great product. All right. All right. Well, we're just about out of time here for the Positively Petland show. Is there anything else you want to mention? Today? I have. I, I don't remember if I've said it on the air or not. There is a shampoo, and I, I don't know. I get extremely excited when we find a product that is just above and beyond anything else that I've ever tried. Uh, BioGroom is a great company for shampoos and conditioners for your dog. And they get into other things, but that's their claim to fame. Mm -hmm. This one that I'm looking at and that I've used on my dogs, and I was wowed by it. It's called Indulge. It's sulfate-free. And for the ladies out there, Argan oil is a... Is, uh, the component in here for the shampoo. And right now the ladies go are going, Oh yeah, I know what argan oil is. Oh, okay. I have it in my shampoo. I'm getting it at the salon. And what they know about it is, is when they use that shampoo, their hair is silky, hmm. silky smooth. And when, uh, when I was at a uh, bio groom, they said, uh, they showed me it and I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know what argan oils. And he goes, watch this. And he went up to random ladies. This was at a trade show. So we and were out on the them. sidewalk and asked them, are you using argan oil? And a hundred percent of the ladies in that trade show said yes. And then, and then he said, "Tell me about what you like about argan oil." And it was all this silky. Right. Like, right. I didn't even know. You know. Us guys were in the dark yeah. on this one. I would use this if I had hair. I would use this stuff on my hair. Nice. Because it is so silky. Smooth. Bio groom. Right. By bio groom. We have it in our stores. We have it at the register. We have it uh, on the shelf. Uh, we're stocking it like we're selling 20 of these bottles a week because people are finding out about it. And, and it's an incredibly great shampoo for your dog. Nice. I'm using it on both my short hair dog and my long hair dog. The long hair dog, I do use a BioGroom silk conditioner uh, to, to make it so I can blow dry and keep that hair from knotting up. But for those short hair dogs, this is all you're going to need is the uh, Biogroom Indulge with Argan Oil. Nice. Well, we are just about out of time for the show. I know you said you had a, a type of food that you wanted oh, to totally talk about. So about do that. you want to just wait till next week? We can pick one? that up next week. All right. We'll talk about that next week because we are out of time. But this has been the Positive Petland Show. Thanks, Ron, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very, yep. very Ron much. Ron Salzer with Petland of Iowa City. If you couldn't find a chew in that show, well, geez, I don't know. <laughs> you, got, yeah. you guys have a selection, a wide selection of items there for your dogs and cats and, and even rabbits. AM 800 KXIC. Until next time, this has been the Positive Petland Show. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Andy Dean here. As a radio host turned entrepreneur, I've seen firsthand how cash really is king. So instead of getting high interest rate credit cards, I turned to Prosper.com. Prosper's online marketplace connects people who need money with those who want to invest. Invest in you. You can use Prosper to borrow up to $35,000 in as few as five days. With Prosper, you can borrow money for just about anything you desire. You can pay off.